Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the talk. Today I'll be talking about an interesting finding that I found in one of a connected, connected car and uh, I could able to hack into the car and I could do whatever I could. So uh, the title of the presentation is Remote Exploitation of Honda Cars. I know most of the speakers uh, in car hacking village is going to talk about the Honda cars. So uh, like, uh, it was an accidental vulnerability that I found and during my uh, research. Okay, so before going to the uh, presentation, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed Shain. I'm a NAPSEC engineer. I'm from India. Uh, I'm also a, a occasional bug bounty hunter. I have uh, Hall of Fames in top companies like uh, Google, Apple, etc. So I I'm also, uh, the chapter lead of ASRG Kerala. ASRG is a um, group that deals with automotive cybersecurity. So I lead the chapter uh, in Kerala. And we have been uh, like um, conducting webinars, talks uh, in conferences like Cocoon uh, for the past one year. I'm also a volunteer at DEFCON Trivandrum. Uh, and I'm also an automotive photographer. So uh, you could see my uh, photographs uh, in my Instagram handle. I have. Um, mentioned it here. So today uh, I'll be talking about a vulnerability that I found in one of Honda's cars and the vulnerability was in its API with, uh, with uh, which um, uh, which was uh, connecting to the uh, telematics control unit of the car and I could hack into the, uh, the API and gradually into the car. So the car is uh, Honda City fifth gen then okay before uh, moving to the uh, uh, talk like uh, let's uh, talk about the attack surface of a car like um, like i'm not a car hacker but uh, it's my like i love uh, what researching about automotive cybersecurity so uh, most of the time i work on uh, the web application android application or ios uh, vulnerabilities so uh, considering a car we could um, what briefly um, what um, break down it in uh, the attack surfaces into the Wi-Fi related attacks, uh, telematics attacks, the mobile uh, web, mobile application attack, the OBD attacks. So today uh, we'll be talking about uh, the uh, app vulnerability that I found and I could able to hack into the car. So uh, what are the advantages of mobile apps uh, in automotive industry? The uh, the best answer is like you know, it is easy to use and it has a great interface. So uh, anyone who uh, knows to um, would operate a mobile phone can would use the um, dashboard or the interface in the application. So uh, he uh, he or she could would um, interact with the car. That's why uh, most of the car manufacturers are now uh, moving to the mobile applications for controlling the cars. So uh, so what is a connected car? A connected car is one and uh, it has its own connection to the internet and uh, that's like an IoT device. So when you connect your car to the internet, it became, uh, gradually becomes an IoT device. So uh, we know that uh, there are uh, multiple devices that are connected to the internet right now, like uh, the refrigerators, even uh, um, everything, everything uh, is connected to the internet. So uh, the uh, cars, car industry is also moving to the IoT category so uh, there's a funny story uh, like i started uh, what uh, like before starting um, yeah what, uh, focusing on the honda car or the automotive hacking stuff i this was an article by um, or this was a research by josh carlos and he claims that he could uh, hack into internet connected trucks so I was like, I was very much excited about this. And I read the article and it was like, uh, he, he used uh, Shodan, the, uh, the internet connected um, word, uh, devices, like that, uh, the, uh, the search engine that can be used to uh, track internet connected uh, devices, the Shodan site. He used it to find uh, the trucks or the telematics gateway units of the trucks and uh, the it was using a vulnerable protocol or a, a not so secure protocol and it was a telnet and he used those telnet protocol to uh, uh, to hack into the uh, the trucks so uh, i was pretty much amazed by reading this and after that i started researching about telematics control unit 
So uh, before that, uh, telematics gateway unit was the one uh, that the researcher used to hack it. A telematics gateway unit has high uh, what performance than a telematics control unit. A telematics control unit is a uh, embedded what hardware that is used to connect your car to the uh, internet. So uh, after that, I um, most of the research was on uh, the uh, telematics control unit, and I found that a car can be connected to another car, or they can communicate each other, or a car can be connected to the internet, uh, to the mobile phones, or etc. So uh, telematics control uh, unit was the main thing that what uh, interests me. But I I have also like started researching about the um the word bluetooth related attacks wi-fi related attacks but you know I, uh, the, in india we don't have much hardware or uh, the, there there are uh, problems while purchasing uh, the stuffs that can be used to car hack so uh, my research what uh, stick a stick on with us uh, with the um, mobile applications So uh, I recreated the, uh, those attacks, like it was simple. I used uh, Shorten to uh, search the vulnerable um, telematics gateway units and I got some and I was like, I was, I researched about it or I played it with, played it with, it, sorry. Then I was like, yeah, it's cool. So uh, then there's an interesting thing that happened to me. The next day uh, when I opened my laptop, there was an interesting, uh, Google uh, uh, advertisement. Uh, it was like uh, it was uh, it was about a connected car. Uh, the uh, okay, sorry. So uh, I think I'm going to like I'm going to uh, re-record it. So sorry. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk. Uh, today, I'll be talking about a vulnerability that I found in one of the connected cars. And uh, the title of my presentation is a Remote Exploitation of Honda Cars. So, uh, this would be a research about uh, me uh, that was conducted a uh, few months before. I, uh, I was able to hack into a Honda car um, and by its uh, uh, vulnerable APIs uh, that was controlling the telematics control unit. So uh, let's begin. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed Shine. I'm an application security engineer and I'm from India. Uh, I'm also an occasional bounty hunter. I have Hall of Fame in uh, companies like uh, Google, Apple, etc. So uh, yeah. From this, uh, you could understand that I don't work in the automotive industry. So this is my uh, first talk in uh, automotive, uh, or, uh, something like something that, that is related to uh, automotive. So uh, I'm also uh, the chapter lead of ASRG Kerala. Um, ASRG is Automotive Security Research Group. It's a group uh, that deals with automotive uh, security research, uh, automotive uh, vulnerabilities, etc. So I, I uh, like started uh, this group um, uh, an year ago, and uh, currently we have what uh, we have um, conducted workshop. No, not sorry, workshops. Uh, we have uh, conducted. Three, two. One, two. Let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Mohammed Shain. I'm an application security engineer. I'm, an, uh, I'm also an occasional bug bounty hunter. Uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm also the chapter lead. Sorry. 
Hello everyone, welcome to the talk. Today I'll be talking about uh, remote exploitation of Honda cars. This was a recent vulnerability uh, in a Honda car that was found by me a few months before. I, um, I, I was able to hack into a car uh, through its vulnerable APIs. So uh, before uh, moving to this session, let me um, introduce myself. My name is Mohammed Shine. I'm an application security engineer and a bug bounty hunter. I do bug bounties occasionally. So uh, yeah, from my title, you could understand that I'm not a um, automotive security engineer. Like I mostly work with, uh, work on um, the web application, mobile application security. And automotive security is kind of some kind of like part-time or a free time job. I uh, research or I read about automotive security blogs. I watch videos uh, in car hacking villages. I love the, this stuff. So. Uh, then I'm also the chapter lead of uh, ASRG Kerala. Uh, ASRG is Automotive Security Research Group. We deals with automotive security uh, research and uh, the vulnerabilities that affects automotive components, et cetera. I'm also the volunteer at uh, DEF CON I'm also a, uh, an automotive photographer. If you uh, love like car photos or motorcycle photos, you, could, uh, you should visit my Instagram profile. I have uh, mentioned it there. Okay, let's begin. So uh, the vehicle that have, uh, that I have used for testing is a Honda City Fifth Gen. It is a 2020, uh, 2020 model. And uh, the vulnerability uh, was uh, found three months before. And now the vulnerability is completely fixed. So um, uh, the, this vulnerability uh, was like, it's not a, a vulnerability that affects in a, uh, the hardware component, it was a software related like software uh, end issue. So it was very, uh, it was an easy bug. So uh, let's move. Okay. Uh, before uh, talking about the vulnerability, uh, like, like as a security uh, or an AppSec engineer, like we have multiple vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting, uh, SQL injections, etc. So, uh, but when I moved to the automotive side, it was not like that. You know, different cars have different components, and uh, previously we had, were uh, we didn't have much technology that were that was in um, automotives. But now, like there are connected cars, there are uh, self-driving cars, there are ADAs, etc. So, uh, breaking down the attacking surface, uh, the thing that. Uh, I like mostly is the telematics control unit and the uh, mobile applications. There's a funny story behind that. I will be explaining it later, but uh, these are the common entry points or the attack points in a car. So mobile applications, from those um, attack uh, entry points, we'll be like, I'll be talking about the mobile applications, both iOS and Android. So, and uh, why why um, the car owners or the car companies are adapting mobile applications to control their cars? The, the reason is pretty much simple. It's because um, it's easy to use. So uh, everyone uses a mobile phone or a mobile application. Everyone knows how to operate a mobile phone. So it's very easy to handle a, a mobile application that has been uh, connected to a car. So this is the main reason why the mobile the, uh, there's a drastic increase in the mobile applications or connected mobile applications to your car. Then uh, what is a connected car? A connected car is one uh, it has on a which has its own uh, connection to the internet. So you could remotely control the car, or you could remotely track your car, etc. So uh, this is a story behind my uh, finding. Uh, my finding is pretty much very easy to find, but uh, this is where it all begins. I uh, read a, a, an interesting blog by uh, Joe Scalos Norte, and uh, he claims that. Uh, he was able to hack into multiple trucks, uh, the trucks uh, through its uh, vulnerable telematics gateway unit or the PGUs. The uh, reason uh, or the vulnerability was in its in the protocol that is telnet and it was an unauthenticated uh, telnet. So he could uh, grab all the IPs and he could simply uh, use the telnet protocol to hack into the um, truck. 
So I was like, uh, wow, this is super. And it's super cool because you know it's very easy to hack into a truck. So I, from that uh, day on, which I started researching about the uh, what the telematics control units or, or the mobile applications or the APIs that are interacting with the telematics uh, or the TCU, etc. So uh, then, okay, uh, the telematics gateway unit is something that is uh, similar to TCU, but it is what it, it handles much more uh, throttle. And uh, so uh, I, uh, what mostly I used the uh, Google or the search in Google to search about uh, telematics and the all the stuff and uh, the reason why i'm telling you about google is because there's a there's a thing behind it i'll show you so uh, after that i recreated the attack uh, from the blog i used shorten to uh, find the open um, ports in, in those telematics gateway units and and i got able to what track those drugs like him so i was like whoa this is super cool it's very really easy to do a Hack because you know I, I have seen research and automotive research that is very complicated. You know, it's very it, uh, automotive security is something that uh, it's not like web applications or um, the appsec industry. It's, it's 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 little complicated due to the hardware level stuff. So I was I was like oh it's super cool and I I I was planning to do uh, similar research on um, mobile applications, the vulnerabilities that are that affects the mobile applications. Then. Uh, yeah, Google ad. The next day, I got a Google ad uh, regarding a car that is found in my country. And uh, this is a Honda City fifth gen. And uh, this was the, this is the first uh, connected car in India. So I was like, "Wow, this is cool!" And I could see uh, a mobile app that has been uh, found in the App Store as well as the Play Store. Then I uh, started uh, what reading about the um, cars, uh, the car application. Uh, it contains um, more than 30 uh, features. So um, basically the mobile application can be used to do anything to the car. So that means like you could start the engine, you could open the doors, you could uh, what, you could uh, open the boot, everything. So I was like, wow, what if I hack the mobile application? If I hack the mobile application, yeah, I could uh, hack into the car as well. So that was my, um, that was the thing that was scratching my mind. So I started, uh, researching on the uh, mobile application completely and these were the features of honda connected you could uh, see like there there's a tire deflation alert that means it contains a tpms and it, it contains um, almost um what uh, everything that can be performed the car and the interesting features were like uh we could uh like we could uh start the you know start the car the reason is like it, it is only possible in the uh the automatic variant yeah and uh, you could unlock the doors you could uh, even um, open the boot you could uh, track the car etc so uh, these were the four things that like, that that i was interested in then i went to uh about uh, like i read about uh, how the uh, application controls the car it was like uh, it's uh, there's a cloud server and that has been um, controlling the car and the uh, request has been uh what going through the phone like so for example if you need to open the uh open the door of the car you could press the button in the mobile phone it sends an api request to the server and it in it what connects or the it uh, interacts with the telematics control unit so the first thing that i uh, did was i downloaded the application and the mobile application and I uh, reversed it and I well, decompiled it completely, and I I could see some API endpoints. So after the uh, static analysis, I couldn't find anything interesting. Uh, there were some API keys that was not useful. So uh, I what I pre uh, like I I have sat for two days for finding some parts, and I didn't get anything. The uh, static analysis part, and. Then I moved to the dynamic analysis and I personally love dynamic analysis. Uh, dynamic analysis is where when uh, we, uh, we run the application and find the vulnerability. Uh, the application had some uh, security controls like uh, root detection and SSL pinning. So uh, it's like uh, you can't run this mobile application on a rooted or a jailbroken device. Uh, it's a security control by the Honda team, but uh, it is easily bypassable. 
so the reason uh, why they uh, did this was like uh, you know most of the security researchers or the attackers use rooted devices for testing the these applications so uh, they uh, yeah they by default uh, place this as a security control so then SSL pinning is uh, uh, is a client side security control that that is used to pin certificates and while running the application uh, the certificates were checked with the uh, certificates that are placed in the server so uh, this doesn't allow uh, what man in the middle attacks so you can't intercept the traffic of the application so these were the only security controls that were placed in this mobile application and uh, tools for the trade for bypassing this you uh, you can uh, use a router device or a, or emulators like Jenny motion or uh, and tools uh, trader uh, for bypassing those controls like root detection and SSL pinning and Bob suite or HTTP toolkit can be used to uh, analyze the traffic so uh, then I uh, what I opened the application via Frida, like I injected a script that can be used to bypass the SSL pinning as well as the uh, road detection. So now the application is all uh, ready to to be performed the vulnerability assessment. So I uh, like this is the front page of uh, the Honda Connect application, and uh, then there were there was a field for mobile number. So this is how the mobile application works. First, you are, the user gives his phone number and he will get an OTP, it's a one-time password, and uh, he should enter it, he or she should enter it, and uh, then it moves to the M-PIN. M-PIN is a second layer of protection that, that can uh, that uses the biometrics of the phone or a four-digit number that is created by the user. So this is how the app, app functions. So I, uh, yeah, then I, uh, I gave my number and I didn't get the award in the OTP or something. So I was like, why? Then I uh, contacted the Honda showroom nearby. So I asked uh, them about the application. Like, uh, actually, I, I, I didn't uh, tell, uh, or I didn't tell them that I'm a security researcher. I, uh, I call like a regular customer and I asked them and I understood about the application. So this, uh, this is how the application performs. Uh, when you purchase the car, they will set all the, uh, they will uh, what configure all the number in the car everything and they'll give you so only thing the user need to know is like to uh, log in with the otp or the m pin sorry not the otp the m pin and he could uh, use it to control the car so the next thing like uh, i did was i contacted um, any of my friends who owns honda cars but most of them had a non connected car that means it's not connected so can't perform any attacks there so uh, after that, I got a friend who uh, who gave me his car to test. So uh, that was a, a connected car. So I was like, I was happy, and I he gave him his number, and I uh, I used uh, what I uh, bypassed uh, the OTP thing. This was the first thing I done. I used Freda to bypass it. Then I analyzed the traffic. So I was uh, analyzing the traffic. You could see the uh, Proud API Honda. APIs. So this is the uh, response. The response contains a generated OTP. So that is a vulnerability. So that was uh, that's, that's an easy vulnerability, by the way. So when you give the number, the uh, OTP is uh, OTP uh, is intended to be sent in the mobile phone. But here the OTP was uh, reflected in the response. So it was very easy vulnerability. So this was very easy what i did was like i uh, used 5613 the otp that's uh, seen here and i uh, entered that the next thing was the m pin and uh, since i used an emulator it doesn't pop out the biometrics option it asked me for the uh, number so uh, there was an option called for forgot m pin when you give the forgot m pin option it will ask for the phone number again and i gave the phone number like again, the OTP was leaking in the response. So I could use this to reset the MP. And I gave a symbol uh, or uh, I gave a number like one, two, three, four to reset it. Then I could get into the car. So this is how, uh, this, this was very, this was pretty much simple exploit and I could hack into the car easily. 
So the next thing uh, was like, I was like, wow, this is super cool. And I created some Python scripts and uh, I don't even need what complicated the Jenny motion stuff or a phone. I created those scripts and I gave the phone number and I could just click enter and I could start the car. I could uh, unlock the boot and I could, I could unlock the tower set, everything. I, uh, it was really easy for me. And uh, I was like, wow, super cool. I, from an app sec engineer, I moved to the cyber sec, like automotive sec engineer, like kind of stuff. And it was nice. Uh, during the research, I could, uh, I could uh, understand many uh, things that is going behind the car, how the car controls, or, or sorry, how the app controls the car, or how it uh, communicates. It was a uh, funny process, learning process. Then disclosure, uh, I reported this bug uh, to uh, Auto Isaac first. When I checked Auto Isaac, it was uh, the Honda was listed in their uh, partner partnership. So I reported to Auto Isaac, but I didn't get any uh, response uh, for two days. So I contacted Honda in Kitchen. After contacting them, uh, they uh, they called me. Yeah, and they called me and they asked me about the oh, vulnerability or how I found the vulnerability. I took a call, I scheduled a call with them and I demonstrated it. And I basically, I, I showed everything that I found and they were happy. So uh, they, uh, what, they, they, uh, they thanked me and the vulnerability was fixed within two or three hours, I guess. So, uh, and, uh, uh, I could. Uh, I should also speak about the uh, the disclosure process. You know, most of the uh, automotive companies uh, doesn't have a responsible disclosure process. Or in India, that's a that's a main pro that they, that's a main problem that is faced by security researchers here. So when we find the vulnerability, they don't know where to report it and how to report. So, but Honda team doesn't have a responsible disclosure program. But they uh, what they were very um, cooperative cooperative with me. They um, uh, they sat with me for hours to fix this vulnerability, and now the uh, car is totally safe. And thank you. This is a. Uh, uh, I hope uh, this was uh, an interesting talk. And if you uh, if you have any uh, what doubts or clarification, you can contact me. This is my uh, Twitter handle. Uh, thank you so much.